the vertical shift. So now we're going to move on to the more complicated transformations, which are stretching. So we're going to look at stretches now. And if you stretch in, you make things instead of twice as tall, if you make them half as tall, a lot of times you call that compressing, even though that's just stretching things smaller. So do stretches slash compressions. The way I'm going to teach it, we're going to do, or we're going to stretch before we shift. So you can shift before you stretch, but then you have to uh, carefully do your algebra in a slightly different way. So the way I'm going to teach it is this way. So we'll do our stretching before we do our shifting. We'll do our vertical. Uh, stretch first. So stretching always looks like a multiplication. When we do vertical, they always happen outside the function. So it looks like the function f of x multiplied by some number a. And that will be a vertical stretch. So the graph of G is the graph of F stretched vertically by A units. And the way we'll denote this, it'll look a lot like a vertical shift, except the arrow will have two, arrow, two heads on it. So it'll point both ways, and that just means we're going to be stretching by whatever number A is. If you are a algebra numbers person, not a visual person, all you have to do is take all your Y coordinates. Instead of adding to them, you just multiply them by the number A. So you're just going to multiply all your Y coordinates by A. And we'll do an example with this. <clears throat> so we're going to graph this function, g of x, which is negative 1 half times absolute value of x. We're going to uh, write the base function. and its graph, and then we're going to write the transformation. So what is the base function? All you have to do is cover up the number, the vertical stretch number you're multiplying by. So the base function is absolute value of x. So f of x equals absolute value of x. We're going to do a really fast graph. There's only three points you really need to keep track of on the absolute value function. It's the same three points you keep track of on the parabola, except you connect them differently. So there's our absolute value graph. So when we are doing our stretch here, we're going to multiply. Our transformation is a vertical stretch by negative 1 half. So that 1 half is going to make it half as tall, or think about compressing it down to half its height. In the similar way that a garbage compactor works, or it just think of something pressing downwards like this, and it's going to press it down so it's half as tall. What will the negative accomplish? So it will be half as tall, but something else is going to happen. It'll flip. So all the positive y values are going to become not just half, but half their value negative. So what used to be up here at 1, is going to now appear at negative one half. So we're going to multiply our y values by negative one half. So we go to graph this out. It's going to be a little bit 
uh, crowded to do negative one half as y values, but we'll do our best here. So we have one, negative one, and negative one y value. We'll go to our negative two. I'm gonna put up two more points. <clears throat> so if x is two, y would be negative one. If x is negative two, y is also negative one. And then connect these together. And those extra points came from those extra points I put on the other graph. So how would you know if everything I'm telling you I just made up this morning, driving to work because I was bored, how could we check if this was the graph of the function? What's the definition of a graph? So we could, so if this fails a vertical line test, we don't, we didn't graph a function, but that doesn't narrow it down to this function. So remember, a graph is all points that satisfy, in this case, a fun this function. So I can just test, I got five points written down. I can just test them all if I have time. Let's just test two of them to be sure. So we're gonna check by testing points. So let's check, let's check the zero, zero point. And let's also test, we'll go with the two, negative one. So I'm gonna run checks on those two points right there. So all you're gonna do is take, and remember you're looking at, these are zero comma g of zero, or they better be, zero comma g of zero or else it's not going to be on the graph. So what this tells us is g of zero equals zero. So when the x coordinate is zero, the y coordinate is zero. And the g function negative one half absolute value of x which is zero. So we get zero equals zero and that point satisfies this equation. So let's go ahead and test the other point. So this is two comma g of two, which means g of two, no, yeah. No, yeah, so this, this point right here, so g of two equals negative one. <clears throat> it might be a little easier seeing it written out sideways like this. All you're doing when you compare points, the first coordinates need to be the same and the second coordinates also need to be the same. So when you're saying two points are the same point, that means their x-coordinate matches and their y-coordinate matches. Otherwise, you're not talking about the same point. So our x-coordinates are two and our y-coordinates are really what we're pairing up right here. I could write down two equals two, but we're not really learning anything from that right there. The second one is really what we're testing. So we're going to take 2 and apply the g function. So that is negative 1 half times the absolute value of 2. And that is negative 1 half times regular 2, which is negative 1. And of course, negative 1 equals negative 1. So this point is on the graph. I only checked two points, and they were both in the graph. It's possible my graph's still wrong, but the more points you check, the higher your confidence can be in you having that correct graph right here. So it's a really good thing to do, especially if you're, uh, you got extra time in your quiz. It's a good chance we'll have a graphing quiz Thursday if we finish today. Could be a good day for a graphing quiz. And you can test your graph if you have any extra time by plugging in points at the end. 
So that is a vertical stretch. We're going to look at a horizontal stretch next. So before I write down any of the horizontal stretch, all the horizontals are the opposite of what they look like. So yesterday we saw if we add a number that actually shifts it in a negative direction. Or it's kind of like adding the negative. So if it looks like you're adding 4, you're actually it acts like you're subtracting 4. So in this horizontal stretch, it will look the way you are probably expecting. It's going to be a multiplication. But this time it's not outside the function. This time it's happening inside the function. Or happening right next to x. So the graph of g is the graph of f. Not shifted, but stretched. Stretch horizontally. So normally, <coughs> you would think it should be a multiply all your x-coordinates by a, but what's the opposite of multiplying your x-coordinates by a? Dividing. Dividing, or multiplying by 1 over a. So we're actually going to multiply all your x-coordinates by the reciprocal 1 over a. And we'll use that similar arrow with the two uh, arrowheads, and we're going to use 1 over a as our stretch. So it looks like you're multiplying by a, but it's actually the opposite of multiplying by a. So let's multiply by 1 over a. And same thing, if a is negative, then you're going to end up flipping all of your negative x-coordinates to positive and positive to negative. So if this is negative, I'll have a reflection effect as well. So our first example with horizontal stretch. We're going to graph g of x equals square root 2x. So multiplying by 2 is that horizontal stretch, except it's not going to act like multiply by 2. It's going to act like multiply by 1 half. So it's going to get half as wide as the original. So our transformation so we're going to take our x-coordinates and make them all half as big as the original graph. And our base function if you cover out the 2 all you have is a square root x function And the three points, the first point on the square root function is 0, 0, and then 1, 1, and then 4, 2. So there's our original square root graph. And all we're going to do is take these x coordinates carefully and multiply them by a half. So I've written out the three x values that we're going to pay attention to. So all we're going to do is multiply each of those three numbers by a half. So 0 times a half is 0, 1 times a half is 1 half, and 4 times a half is 2. And there's our new graph.
So any questions on this horizontal stretch? So now we're going to do the difficult part, which is put all the stretches together and then look at the order that we need to do them in. So all, well I, should, I said all four stretches, but all four transformations. So if we write them all into one function, This is the form I want you to get the function into. Most of the work, really the only algebra you're mostly going to have to do is right inside here. We're going to factor. We're going to factor out A on the inside of the function. Once we have it in this form, we're going to do our horizontal first. So we're going to do our stretch, and then our shift, and then vertical, stretch, and shift. So in this form, how much horizontal stretch are we going to do? So what variable corresponds to the horizontal stretch? So it'll be little a, and we're going to stretch as 1 over a. So it'll be a reciprocal 1 over a. What about horizontal shift? What letter corresponds to our shift? So that would be our little h, and we're going to go right little h. Well, there's no big h, but right h. Now we're into vertical, and vertical stretch, what variable is vertical stretch? So that would be our big A, and these are regular, so this is just stretch as big A. And then last up, there's only one choice, we're going to go shift up K units. <clears throat> it doesn't, it's not super important if you do horizontal first or vertical. However, it is very important that you stretch before you shift. So you want to make sure you stretch before you shift, or else you'll have some problems. Just like in exercise, you're supposed to stretch first. When you grab transformations, you're supposed to stretch first the way that I'm teaching it. So we're going to do some example problems where we have lots of transformations happening. So our first function will be g of x equals 3 divided by x minus 2 plus 1. So there are quite a few transformations happening here. There is one transformation not happening. Which transformation is not happening? It's kind of hard to see. Horizontal stretch is a correct answer. So if you look at where x is, we got minus 2. So we do have a horizontal shift, but x is not. There's nothing in front of x multiplying it. So there's not going to be a horizontal stretch. So we're going to write out the four transformations in order. So we have first up horizontal stretch. We said none. So I'm going to cross that out. We do have a shift. Are we going left or right? So it looks negative, but that actually means we're going to the right too. Now, the verticals are a little more tricky. Let's write down the base function first. Now, all the examples that I've created, we looked at 
the functions in the last section. So there's about eight choices, eight base functions that we looked at. A lot of those should be super familiar. Quadratics, let's see, graphs. So it's not absolute value. I didn't see absolute value. Uh, it's not a, step, uh, not a piecewise or a step function. So we got the square root cube root. It's got none of those square root cube roots. What about, is it a quadratic or a cubic function or linear? Doesn't look like any of those. This one right here though. So it looks like the one over x function. So that's our base function. So I'm going to rewrite this once I write the base function. So there's our base function. I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times 1 over x minus 2. And now it might be a little more clear that that 3 is a vertical stretch. So it would be 3 times that 1 over x minus 2 function. So we're going to do our vertical stretch next, stretch by 3 times. And last up, what is our vertical shift? Up one. Up one. That's that little plus one at the end. That's probably the easiest one of all of them to see. So there's the transformations we're going to perform. Let's graph the base function. This had a horizontal and vertical asymptote. x equals 0, y equals 0 are the two asymptotes. We got the point 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And then we have two curves. All right, Centralia High School colors, I think. All right, base function. Any questions before we start? applying all the transformations. You can absolutely label 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. All right, shift right 2. So we're going to do that first. So we're going to write all of our graphs down here. So our transformed graphs. We're going to do only one transformation at a time. So we're going to have three graphs we're going to draw. The first one will be shifted right to. And the function we're going to graph, <coughs> it's not y equals 1 over x. This is the just the y equals 1 over x minus 2. So this just includes the shift to the right. So do your best to shift this graph to the right to which asymptote is going to actually move. So what will the horizontal asymptote look like if you shift to the right? It'll look exactly the way it is. So the vertical one's going to move to the right too. And if you're not a visual person, that's no problem. What does shifting to the right to if you think about the x-coordinates, what does that arithmetically do to all the x values? Add two. add two. So you can look at the x values and add two. And I'm just looking right there. x equals 0 is going to move over to x equals 2. So you're literally adding 2 to all the x values you see. So go ahead and do that right now. Either just redraw the graph shifted right or add 2 to each x value and then redraw it.
Are there any questions on our shift graph? So we're going to go on to the vertical stretch graph now. So I'm going to write the equation we're graphing. So this is 3 times 1 over x minus 2. So when we graph this vertical stretch, are the asymptotes going to change? So we're going to take this graph, make it 3 times taller. So are the two orange lines going to change? Nope. So if you think about it, this vertical one, yeah, it gets three times longer, but it was already infinitely long. It was not however long I drew it in the picture. It goes on forever. So it won't actually change, and the horizontal one won't change at all. Uh, what will change? The two y coordinates on the graph that are not zero. Those will become three times as big. Another way to think about stretching, you're moving three times further away from the x-axis. It's kind of a weird thing to think about. Uh, if you ever use silly putty, that's one thing that you can press in a newspaper and stretch it out and see the stretch happen. But that's about one of the only, unless you have a rubber band that has words printed on it and you can stretch it out. It's the only other thing I could think of. But I can't think of many rubber bands that have words on them. Uh, and most of them, if you stretch them three times, will probably snap anyways. So <clears throat> take your y coordinates, multiply by three, and redraw your graph. It's not going to look too much different. So there's our vertically stretched graph. And now we're ready to apply our last transformation, which is shift up one. And this function is y equals three times one over x minus two plus one. So what we're going to do is take our y coordinates. There's three y coordinates to pay attention to, 3, negative 3, and 0. So we're going to just shift all those up by 1. Any questions on what we did here? Okay. 
So I want to ask you your transformation question, whether it's on your quiz this week or your midterm next week, or maybe both. You're going to tell me the transformations in order and the base function. You're going to graph the base function and then graph the transformations. So it's pretty much exactly what we just did on the last example right there. So you're going to tell me base function, transformations, and then how they uh, change the graph. So let's grab this function right here. This doesn't look like functions that we've looked at so far. And if it wasn't for this minus 4x, I could just say this was parabola with a stretch, vertical stretch. If it wasn't for just the x, that would just be a vertical sh uh, shift down 4. Unfortunately, this looks kind of like two functions. How can I make x appear in one place? You have the skills to do this. Complete the square. So first thing we're going to do is factor out a 2. So we're left with x squared minus 2x. And now I want you to complete the square on x squared minus 2x. I'll give you a hint. b is negative 2. So b over 2 is negative 1. So go ahead and complete the square on this. So any complete the square questions? So you can see the horizontal transformation right now. Well, I need to be more specific. There is no horizontal stretch. What is the horizontal shift? One to left or right? One to the right. So we got no horizontal stretch. There's no, uh, there is a multiplying by 2, but it happens after you've squared x minus 1. So there is a stretch, but it's not horizontal. So we're going to shift to the right one. <coughs> this is not quite in the, this is getting close to the right form, but this is not quite in the all four transformation form. The problem is, I need my vertical shift to be not multiplied by the 2. So if we look back down at where we are, this is not the vertical shift right here. It's almost a vertical shift. What algebra do I need to do to see the vertical shift properly? So I need to take the 2 and basically distribute it. So I need to multiply by that 2. So now I can see the vertical shift is down 2. And what is the vertical stretch? So it's the 2 on the left side that we're multiplying by. So there's a vertical stretch by 2. Alright, any questions on getting these transformations out using algebra? So I didn't really, s I, if you want to say what I solved for, I basically solved for the right form. So I didn't really solve for x or g of x, I transformed it into the correct form using algebra. 
So our original function, what is the original function? If you cover up minus two, the other two, and the other minus one, you got x squared. So you can use your fingers to cover these up, because I know you can't erase so easily. So just cover up all the uh, transformations, and you got the base function. So our base is x squared. Easy to graph, three points to pay attention to. So there's our parabola. So I want you to go ahead right now and apply. So give me three more graphs. Each one is transformed in these ways. And you have to do this order correct as well. questions on so um is it not supposed to shift to the right 
Oh, yeah. I went left. Hopefully you did not go left. So I wrote the right thing, all my graphs are wrong. Was that what all of you were thinking? Yeah. OK, good thought. All right, so I'll fix them all. Probably better to start over. Everything else I believe is right. The vertical stuff looks right.